Hello Mini Pilots, my name's Paul Tace and in this video I want to be going over what went wrong when I crashed my Mini into the water. So if you're planning on flying your Mini low over the water, we're going to go over the VIO, we're going to look at a few tests, and we're going to see how the Mavic flies when it flies low over the water. Now I've had a lot of people uh, that just said it was a silly thing to do, putting something unbalanced over the water and then flying it low to the surface is not a good idea. And I must admit in hindsight, I completely agree with that. However, there are a few people that said this is down to a uh, pilot error, so um, I'm going to look into this a bit deeper. Uh, they say it's not actually the product, but it's the way I was flying the drone. I also want to say that the vast majority of comments were really supportive and really lovely to receive, and I wanted to say thank you to all those people. Uh, now obviously I don't want to be misleading or um, say a product's bad when it's actually good. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a few experiments and put this drone to the test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate some water, I'm going to hover the drone low over it without the legs, and then I'm going to put the legs on and repeat the test. And at the end, you'll have all the information you need to make your own decision. So let's get started. So if you've seen any of my older videos, you know I'm going to be shooting on a low budget. But in contrast, I'm going to be serious about the outcome. So the first thing I need to do is I need to think about where I'm going to do this. So I've chosen outside and uh, I need a flat surface and uh, to keep as much control over the drone in case it wants to crash. I want netted areas and I also want to be able to see through it. So unfortunately for my daughter, I'm going to be commandeering her trampoline. Now the theory is I can use cling film uh, to mimic the waves and I'm going to attach this loosely to the trampoline. The idea behind this is I can then blow wind underneath and get it to ripple and wave. Uh, now I put an extension lead out and I turn the fan on and the fan is going to blow under the cling film and then make it move. So this should be enough to confuse the sensors of the drone, just having the movement underneath should be enough to confuse the VIO. The VIO is the visual inertial odometry and this is basically the sensors on the bottom of the Mini. Now primarily they're going to be judging the height of the Mini but they can also judge the position and uh, it can compete with GPS to move the Mini to where it should be. So if you've got something moving like a wave underneath or a very reflective surface, it can really confuse the Mini. So the first thing I tried with the cling film, it moved around a lot and it actually split apart. This made it difficult to know exactly what was under the sensors. So after this, I tried some thicker and wider cling film. But when I did this, the force from the Mini blew it flat against the surface, so it didn't have much of an effect at all. So what I decided to do was get rid of all the cling film and then use an old bed sheet. And then by shaking the bed sheet, I could make some waves. Now after doing this for a bit, I did realise that shaking the sheet side to side had more of an effect. And I'm guessing this is because of the way the sensors are aligned on the bottom of the Mini. They're next to each other and not one in front of the other. So a side to side motion will confuse it more. So the first test I did was just to shake the blanket under the Mini with no legs on it at all. And as you can see, by doing this, I could actually get the Mini to lose altitude. So um, it also did very slightly go to one side as it tried to recognise where it should be. Now when I stopped shaking the sheet, you can see it just hovers more or less in place as you would expect above any other surface. So I decided to put it over the sheet again and then try to see if I could replicate the results. So here it is uh, without the movement. And just so you can see it's one continuous video, I'm going to speed forward to the next part. And then again, when I started shaking the sheets, uh, we can see I do get a bit more movement from the Mini. It's not as exaggerated as it was before, but it's very slight and it goes up and down a bit. And it slightly goes to the side again. But you'll notice it's doing this very slowly. It's also worth noting that it's not rotating. So next, what I wanted to do is put the landing legs on. Now, um, where I've put them on before, I know where it is balanced because uh, it's marked on the foam. So um, I quickly screw them on and then I put it on the blanket for a test. I also go into the safety and advanced safety settings and then I go down to payload mode and I switch the Mavic Mini onto payload mode as it's going to be flying with additional weight. Now I've got a brand new battery in this and we can already see that the motors are going at their maximum capacity and we've reached the maximum payload. But from the safety of the trampoline, I decided to give it a go anyway. And as you can see, it did take off fairly easily. 
and although this is a little bit wobbly, the Mini still looks fairly balanced and it is doing a fairly good job. Now, on the day I crashed it, I did actually manage to take it off and land it a few times before I had any issues whatsoever. So this isn't a huge surprise to me. I did feel it was important to show it working in the previous video, just to make sure that everybody had all the information, and I didn't want to mislead anyone. Now at this point, I've decided there's not much happening, so I've cut out 28 seconds of footage and skipped forwards. So after a while of it floating there, I decided to see what would happen if I shook the blanket underneath. Now this is in smooth mode at the moment, and we can see that when I shook the blanket, we did start to get it to wobble, but it's also rotating itself, which it didn't do before. And eventually we can get it to lose a little bit of altitude. Now it also did start to move towards the back of the trampoline a little bit, but um, it's not terribly different from when we first saw it without the legs on. Now it does say that when the battery gets to 50%, it may start affecting the ability of how it flies. Now I noticed some strange things going on, and this happened when the battery was at 64%. As you can see, I'm not touching the controls, and the drone is spinning around by itself, and the height is changing quite considerably, considering I'm not even touching the remote. So um, I did try to record this on the phone, but I didn't have enough memory. So what I did here is I brought the, uh, the remote over to the camera, so you could see exactly what the drone could see, and what I can see. And here, you can see now, it's at 61% battery. It's also worth pointing out, the battery is going to reduce a lot quicker when you've got a higher payload on than if you didn't have it. So what I did is I decided to continue watching the drone, and then just see if it started to veer off to one side, like it did when I took off from the lake for the first time. Now um, you can see there's a lot of spinning going on now and it's moving really erratically. Um, I'm not actually touching the controls at this point, it's doing it entirely by itself. You can see there is a slight side movement, but again, there's not a lot going on. I decided to put it into a sports mode to see if this would help the power. Now I believe all this does is actually make the drone tilt more, so I'm not sure it's actually going to have any more power to the motors, but I thought it was just worth seeing to see if it would help stay steady. Now it did stay steady for a while, but um, they did have intermittent problems with it bouncing up and down and spinning around. So at this point, I think it's really safe to say that putting the extra payload of the landing legs on the drone is really going to uh, change the way it moves and it's going to give you less control over the drone. Now, um, a lot of people were saying uh, that I was silly to fly low to the water and uh, that I shouldn't have flown it in sports mode. So obviously if you've got water landing legs on, you're going to have to get close to the water at some point. So uh, when I took off, it went to the side by itself and I had no control over it and I believe this is because it had the landing legs on. Now on the day when I crashed the drone there was absolutely no wind and it was certainly a lot less windier than it is in the back garden today. I was also shooting uh, with mounds around the lake which meant there's going to be even less effect of the wind. So I'm pretty sure that all the movement that I had from the drone was from the legs and not from the wind itself. And uh, just so you can see that it's not me controlling the drone at all, I decided to put the remote down and uh, just let it do its thing without me touching it. So after I put it in position, uh, we can see that it's now spinning around and jumping up and down by itself. Now without the legs, it did not rotate itself at all, and uh, the movements are a lot more obvious, and the dropping and raising is a lot more obvious than when it didn't have the legs on. But as you can see, it hasn't yet actually touched the trampoline or the surface it's hovering above. So um, next I decided to see whether it was the manual input that made it do this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump ahead to the part where I started moving the drone backwards and forwards. So here we can see that when I'm moving the drone backwards and forwards, 
there is a, so I hit the edge there. So we can see when I'm moving backwards and forwards, there is a big difference in height. And this is definitely related to the movement forwards and backwards. Now, as you can see, um, I've got my finger completely off the left hand side of the remote, which is what controls the altitude. And then uh, I'm only using the right hand one, which is the forwards and backwards. And this is making it dip quite significantly. And I can actually touch the trampoline when doing this. So after looking at this, I think it's fairly safe to say that putting the, uh, the landing legs on a drone does affect the way it moves and does make it a bit more dangerous to fly over water. The other thing that I want to point out is that obviously if you're testing out the water landing legs, you're going to need to be flying it close to the surface, which again ups the level of danger. So although the legs aren't going to make you fly over the water, it's certainly going to encourage that behaviour. Now I also want to point out that I had some people that commented, or I had one person that commented, that they used these landing legs and they worked absolutely fine and they've been enjoying them ever since. So um, looking back at what happened to me, um, if it had carried on flying to the right of the screen, it would have hit something and landed in the water anyway, so I had to make a snap judgement and I decided to move it forwards. When I did this, this made it drop and it hit the water. So I believe it is fair to say I could have stopped this from happening by lifting the drone up from the water rather than trying to bring it back towards myself. I did actually say this in my last video, but I just wanted to make it absolutely clear exactly what I think and where I stand. And I decided at the end just to show it again without the legs on, just so you can see even at a low battery it's still hovering nicely without the legs on. So overall, I believe that using the legs will put you in a position that is unfamiliar to you. And there's a good chance that if you're flying over water, you may need to act quickly, uh, particularly if there's anything above the surface, like a boat, a bridge, trees, or anything poking out over the edge. I could have saved my drone if I reacted quickly and in the right direction, but I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be flying with the landing legs over water again. But rather than saying you should or shouldn't buy the water landing legs, I'd be really interested to know you know how you feel about them after seeing these experiments and knowing about it in a bit more detail. So if you have time in the comment section, it'd be really great just to see a little message, knowing that they could have been saved. Is this now something that you would consider getting, or is it something you feel just isn't worth the risk? I also just wanted to show you I've had a lot of people that have told me that there's still a chance it could work uh, once it's dried out. This has been laying around for about a month now, and uh, I still can't get the power on. I probably will strip it down at some point and uh, have a look inside and see if I can get it working, but for the moment, it's well and truly dead. So that's everything for this video. If you found it useful, hitting that like button is a huge help to me as a creator, and I hope to see you in the next one.